Welcome back. Forms are a vital part of so many landing pages, so it just stands to reason that I share some tips for optimizing them. Let's jump into this video on form optimization. Here are five tips for optimizing forms. Start by observing what's happening. Fix usability issues. Reduce, simplify, and amplify. Test different layouts. And make it more conversational. Let's break down each of these tips in the next few slides. First, start by observing what's happening. To do this, you're going to need to collect data from people who are interacting with your form. You can do this with a tool like Hotjar using their session recordings feature. And you can also try their form analysis tool. And you can also conduct more formal usability testing processes where you can engage with real users who complete certain tasks on the page and one of those tasks could be to interact with the form. Without this data though, you're only able to guess on what might be wrong with the form, if anything. So this is a vital step that I don't recommend skipping. Next up, make sure you fix any usability issues right away. Your form needs to be usable. There shouldn't be any difficulty for a user to engage with it from any device they're on, especially a mobile device. I see simple issues like small buttons or drop-down fields that don't work all the time, and this really affects your conversion rate. Remember back when we talked about the fog behavior model? Well, for someone to take action, there needs to be motivation, ability, and a prompt. Well, guess what? If your form is not able to be used very easily, then the visitor will lack the ability to fill it out, and therefore, they won't convert. Number three on this list talks about reducing, simplifying, and amplifying your form elements. What does this mean? Well, if you can reduce the number of form fields, go for it. Forms with fewer fields usually convert better because they make the experience more frictionless for the visitors. And if you can simplify a complex form field into a simple one, do it. A good example is converting an open-ended question into a drop-down choice. This reduces the amount of typing a visitor needs to do. As for amplification, what I mean here is that you should call attention to the most important parts of your form, such as the form header, subhead, and the button. Tip number four is to test out different layouts for your form. One of my favorite techniques is to use a two-step opt-in process for your form. What this means is that instead of just having all of the form fields visible at the top of your page, like what is shown on the previous slide, just have a button. And then when someone clicks that button, they can then see the form either in a light box or down below the page. This is a good idea to test for a number of reasons. First of all, it gives you more room to work with in your hero section, since the form fields aren't cluttering it up anymore. Next, it changes the dynamic of the page from looking like it's taking information from the visitor to one that looks like it's giving information to the visitor, since they don't immediately see the form fields. And finally, it helps people take action because it's a smaller initial commitment. You're no longer asking someone to make the decision of whether or not they want to fill out the form. You're simply asking them to click a button, and only then, after they've clicked, do they see the form. And by this point, since they've already begun taking action, they're more likely to complete it. This is backed up by a scientific principle called the Zegernick effect. If you'd like to learn more about it, I did an entire podcast episode on the Zegernick effect, and you can check it out via the link below this video. Another thing to test is a multi-step form layout, as seen here by Geico. Instead of having all the questions on the first step, you can break things up over multiple steps and give people less to focus on at any given time. This is a very popular technique that can help you boost your conversions. So give it a shot if you have a long form that causes people to drop off. Lastly, the final tip is to make your forms more conversational. One of my favorite tools for doing this is Typeform, the popular form builder software. They let you present just one question at a time in a very conversational way. You can even personalize each question using data you've already collected, such as the visitor's name. It's a great way to make the entire form filling process feel less like work and more like a conversation. 
And as chatbots become more popular, this is truly the direction the entire marketing landscape is headed. So it's best to get familiar with conversational forms now and be ahead of the curve. Well, that's it for form optimization. In the next video, we'll switch gears and look at some specific things you can do to optimize your landing pages for speed and performance. I'll see you there.